welcome back to my channel. My name is Christian. If it's your first time seeing me, go ahead and like this video because I know you're going to like it already. Subscribe and turn on those post notifications so you never miss another upload. And if you already are subscribed, hey babies, welcome back. So today, guys, we are going to be talking about, well, I'm going to be telling you guys a little bit of tea about some things that I've learned in the last two years of being a tarot reader. I don't think it totally slipped my mind that I was about to hit two years. Um, literally, I think somebody asked me on live, on YouTube live yesterday, and I was like, well, yeah, I've been doing this for two years, but I literally had totally forgotten that my little tarot anniversary was coming up. So I've been doing this for two years. I always say my official start date is on May 15th because that's when I ordered my first set of cards and that's when they were supposed to be delivered on May 15th. Now they did end up coming a little bit early, so I guess the beginning of May is more accurate, but I just say May 15th because it's easy for me to keep up with that. So I've been doing tarot reading and tarot services for two years and I have definitely, you know, officially been on this journey of being a psychic spiritual advisor for two years. So I am super excited. Um, to just kind of tell you guys some of the things that I've learned and I hope that if you are interested in being a tarot reader um, Or a spiritual advisor then this is helpful and also if you are interested in getting services And I feel like this could be helpful for you as well So let's talk about some of the things that I've learned in the last two years I am going to be doing a video as well where I'm talking about um, how I basically tap into my psychic ability so be on the lookout for that. And also, guys, the virtual tarot party is going to be this weekend, which is perfect because we need to celebrate my two years. So make sure you guys get your tickets to the virtual tarot party. It's 20 bucks, and the tickets are on my Pix Apothecary, and it's going to be a huge live group tarot session, and you can have the option to ask questions if you want. So I definitely recommend you guys checking that out. I'm going to have the link in the description, of course, where you guys can find those tickets. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video, guys. So I definitely feel that I've had a shift in understanding the collective and understanding what the collective needs and how the collective thinks and how the collective processes different things as I've been on this journey. I definitely feel like, you know, just getting started, I realized that this was a tool, a gift, um, that could be useful for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I truly felt and believe that anyone could use divination, that it could be helpful for anyone, that this is something that everyone needs to invest in because it really can be life-changing. But one of the most important things I've had to learn is that every client is not right for you and that everyone does not want this kind of work. You know, I have people who tell me all the time, oh, I want to book with you, but I'm scared that you're going to tell me something I don't want to hear, or I'm scared that I'm going to have to face something that I've been walking away from or running away from. So everybody is not interested in this. And definitely as someone who is working in psychic work, it's definitely been difficult for me. And I've had to learn to just kind of shut my mouth and I always want to give advice and I always want to read people and I always want to tell them what they need because let's be real I don't need a tarot card to read you you know I'm psychic so I already know what your issues are looking at you or just being around you you know what I'm saying so I feel like for me I definitely have to learn that it's not my job to help everybody or heal everybody or bring everyone's darkness to the light if you do not pay me to give you advice and give you help then i'm not giving you advice i don't care who you are i don't care what you're struggling with you know what i do and you know i'm not giving you advice unless you ask for it so having boundaries and setting boundaries for yourself and also for the people you're around and your clients is definitely going to be really really important um i feel like you know i had certain friends that would ask me Oh, girl, I know you're seeing all the stuff I got going on right now. And I'll be like, no, the fuck, I ain't. Like, I'm not rooting for you. I'm not checking you. I'm not pulling no cards for you. That is not my business. You know, minding your business is really key into just keeping a clear mind because you can't help everybody and give everybody guidance. So you don't want to be using your gifts to pour into everybody and see what everybody has going on when everybody isn't even looking for that. You know, so definitely making sure that you have boundaries set and that you set intentions for the type of clientele you want to attract. I feel like, you know, maybe a few months into my journey, really early on, I started to set intentions for the type of clientele that I want. I want to work with people who want to do the work, who want to be better, who aren't afraid of hard work, who do not experience. Now, I was going to say do not experience fear. I deal with a lot of people who are afraid of a lot of things. But fear is poison, like I always say, and fear 
is an enemy to change and transformation. You will never change if you are afraid. It's not gonna happen. And a lot of people are afraid. And that's just one of the things I've learned about the collective as I've been doing this. A lot of people are afraid. A lot of people are insecure. A lot of people are letting things from their past and from their childhood stop them from being good adults um, and stop them from having a great 60 or 70 years left on this planet because of the things that they've experienced in their past. So. Definitely boundaries, like I said, knowing who you can help and setting intentions, you know, and setting intentions. I have so many videos about this, literally saying a prayer and letting it be known, God, I want to attract clientele like this. I want to work with people who this, I want to work with people who this. And typically I work with people who are on my same vibration, people who's kind of shared my same belief system, people who I can help, you know, like you can't help everybody. So that's something big to know that you can't help everybody. Also, something important to know is that when you're in this line of work and that when you're doing this, you can't really move how you want to move. You know what I'm saying? So I can't do free readings. I can't, you know, change up my business plan or charge a whole bunch of extra money or cancel appointments willy nilly. I have a responsibility to myself and also to God because God has given me these gifts that I'm using. I would not be psychic if it wasn't for God giving me this gift of sight. So I'm very specific and very critical about who I help, when I help, setting appointments, making sure I have time for rest, making sure I have time to cleanse my space and cleanse my energy, and making sure that before I do anything, I talk to God about it first. So you really, really, really want to strengthen your relationship with God before you even think about having a, a career um, when you're helping people and you're using spiritual divination or whatever the case may be. Even if you want to be a YouTuber, you know what I'm saying? You want to make sure that you're asking God, what does my audience need? What can I give to the collective? How can I best work on myself so I can know what everyone else needs? It's a lot of self-healing. It's a lot of self-improvement. It's a lot of self-work. And I can only give others what I have worked on myself. So I can tell you everything you need to know about relationships and how to be a boss and how to make money and how to save and how to, you know, build your confidence up and how to find your own tribe and things like that because I've done those things. So as you're on this journey, you're consistently growing, consistently healing, consistently, you know, leaving things in the past and picking up new traits that are going to be more beneficial for you because you have to get better. You know, if I'm not growing, just like if you're a doctor, if you're not growing and, you know, brushing up on your techniques and becoming better and becoming more knowledgeable, who can you really help? You know what I'm saying? You'll be limited in and how many people you can really reach. So being the best version of yourself is really key in making sure that you're able to provide, you know, the things and the energy and the, the lessons, the blessings, the gifts that people are looking for. So really being dedicated to your own self-improvement and your own, you know, walk of life is really, 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 really key and just being able to sustain um, a career like this. And also, I wanted to tell you guys a little, about, a little bit about what I've learned about the collective. And I hope that there are a few things that I'm going to say that can resonate with you guys or a few things that will make you feel like, okay, I, I feel the same way about this or this resonates with me or this makes sense to how I've been feeling. So let's talk about love readings. Love readings, love readings, love readings. Most of the love readings I do, um, well, not most of the love readings because I have a lot of good love readings as well, but... A lot of people are not getting what they need in love. A lot of people are accepting less um, because they feel guilty, because they feel sh ashamed, because they feel selfish, and because they feel like they are not perfect. Um, also because they feel like, you know, they're supposed to learn something in that chaos. I feel like whenever you are stepping into a space of wanting to be better, you have to really accept who you are and the things that you have done. And you have to understand that it's okay, whatever you've done, it doesn't mean that you deserve trash because of the mistakes that you've made in your past. You know, a lot of people stay in relationships just because they feel like, well, I'm not perfect and I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. So who am I to walk away from this person? Who am I to walk away from this, you know, situation? Who am I to, you know, leave this person alone when they're making me cry every night, when they're gaslighting me, when they're abusing me spiritually, you know, financially, emotionally, energetically, physically, even sexually? Who am I to walk away from this person? I am not perfect. I should help them. They need me. They love me. That's fucking nuts. You know, that's crazy as hell. And that's how most of the population feels. You know, most people are beating themselves up through the relationships in their life because they feel like that's what they deserve. You know what I'm saying? And they feel like that is their project. That is their purpose. That's what they are here for. So I deal with a lot of people who just have a very warped 
perception of pain and of, of trauma, where they are so comfortable in those spaces where it's kind of their norm. Just like in friend groups where, oh, this person isn't right for me, but I want to stay with them and I've known them for so long. I want to keep them in my life and I need this person to support me. And why isn't my mom supporting me? It's been years. I keep trying to work with her. Why isn't she seeing me? Why isn't my family supporting me? It's been years. We have to change our relationship with pain and not use pain as um, a drug because sometimes pain and trauma can be the only time that you really feel alive or the only time that you even feel like you're present in a moment when you're experiencing pain. Other than that, you're at a neutral, nonchalant, very uninterested level in life. So a lot of people don't even have positivity in their life on a daily basis. A lot of people aren't putting in that self-love, putting in that self-work to where the only emotion they feel that really brings a rise out of them is anger, is frustration, is pain, is jealousy, is impatience. Um, and hate and love can feel you the same. You know what I'm saying? So these energies that are deeply toxic and deeply detrimental to your mental health feel as as addicting as being in love being madly in love being on a high where you're just as happy as you ever have been you know those energies kind of give your brain the same type of stimulation it's kind of like when you have a lot of adrenaline going versus when you naturally have built up a certain type of strength it's like i might not have this strength but my adrenaline makes me feel like this is what i'm supposed to be doing my adrenaline makes me feel like this is what i possess when in reality it's you know can be a dangerous situation so i definitely feel like overall a lot of people get attached to their pain and they get attached to their cycles and also subconsciously if you've been used to being abused your entire life you start to abuse yourself and you start to feel comfortable keeping yourself in spaces where abuse is the norm because that's just what you're used to and that's what people don't want to hear that oh I'm addicted to the abuse. I'm addicted to the trauma. I'm addicted to the pain. That's what people are afraid of understanding that you are the reason that you are in those cycles. You know, nobody wants to hear that. Also, um, you know, in career, you know, a lot of people are afraid of being broke. A lot of people are afraid of being on their ass. A lot of people are afraid of getting embarrassed and of messing up and having to start over. Changing your relationship with pain and changing your relationship with fear are two things that will change your life, literally. I tell people all the time, you know, fear is not real. Fear is a hypothetical thing, just like potential. Fear is what if this could possibly, it's not anything real. It's not based on anything real. So a lot of times we can have so much fear in our heart because we're afraid, like I said, of failure or of getting embarrassed or of getting hurt or, or falling down or of losing time. And all that does is just keep you in that space. You know, it's like, dang, I'm afraid of leaving this relationship because I don't want to waste all the time I spend in this relationship. And you waste another 16 months thinking about how you don't want to waste no time. It's like a lot of things that we are programmed to do naturally because of the things in our life and the things that we experience. A lot of the things that we're naturally programmed to do are counterintuitive to our well-being. You know what I'm saying? And we also have to remember that God is not ruling this world. You know, the devil rules this world. And that might sound a little crazy, but that's something that I learned, you know, growing up in church in the Bible that... The devil is the prince of the world. You know, this world is of the devil. There is temptation everywhere. There is darkness everywhere. There is trauma everywhere, abuse everywhere, pain everywhere, um, sin everywhere. All of that, that is what this earth is, literally. And it is hard to break the mold and want to be better and do better. And I feel like this kind of goes back to boundaries, you know, because as someone who has done the work, me, I have started doing this work. I dedicated my life to releasing fear and being the person that I knew I could be and breaking the boundaries and looking at the ugly in my life and looking who at who put the ugly there and dealing with it. And I was able to reconnect with the love of my life. I was able to get married. I was able to make six figures last year. I was able to get the place in my dreams. I was able to have the career of my dreams. I'm able to make the friends that I want to make. My life is not perfect. You know, I stress about paying for vacations. I stress about, you know, being doubtful of myself sometimes. I stress about what I'm going to cook. But I do not live in a constant state of fear, of panic, of trauma, of doubt. That's not something that is a constant for me. I'm in a constant state of gratitude and of release. And if anything, I'm in a constant state of quiet. 
You know, I don't have a mind that's filled with negative thoughts anymore. And I feel like because I looked at those negative thoughts and I dealt with those things, and mind you, my mind isn't perfect. I still deal with these things every now and then, but it's not my consistent. It's not my constant life, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like if you are consistently in a space where trauma, abuse, pain, fear, confusion, insecurity is your normal, then stepping into another space can seem very, very scary because it's just, you know, what you're used to. So I really feel like in setting boundaries, we have to know who we can help and who we can't help. Um, my mentorships are some of my favorite things to do. And I love doing mentorships where I get to work with people for four weeks. And I'm actually about to upgrade my mentorships, guys. My current mentorship packages, I meet with you once a week, every week for four weeks. But I want to switch it up to where I have the option where I can meet twice a week with someone and also even three times a week. So it'll be more expensive, of course. But I am really passionate about working with someone you know, consistently on a, you know, often, you know, on a pretty recurrent basis. I feel like that's the best way to get, you know, um, results, you know, and I feel like that's something important as well because you guys always are so concerned about my spiritual routines and what I do spiritually. And I really don't have a routine. That's why I posted my morning routine because I don't have a spiritual routine. Everything I do is healing. Everything I do is based on how can I be the best person and it doesn't always look like journaling or meditation or yoga. You know, sometimes it looks like me just doing things for me. Sometimes it looks like me having uncomfortable conversations. Sometimes it looks like me finally realizing the trauma that I've experienced in my childhood. Sometimes it looks like me realizing, you know, how my friends in high school and college contributed to my insecurity and contributed to me doubting myself and feeling like I was worth things that I was not deserving of. You know, I feel like the best thing that we can do to heal is just to pull back the curtains and pull back the veil and look at all of the things that we have allowed ourselves to be in. And I know that's definitely the hardest thing and the most scary thing to deal with or look at because we spend most of our life running from the pain. You know, I don't want to think about why I'm addicted to these things. I don't want to think about what caused me trauma and who abused me because a lot of stuff we block out. And growing up, this journey has definitely showed me all the things that I have blocked out. It's showed me all of the things that I've put on the back burner or all the things that I've selectively forgotten as the years have gone on. And it hasn't really helped me because I'm still carrying the scars from these things, even if I have detached myself from the memory of these things. So, um, yeah, I feel like the journey of healing is so difficult and it's a very difficult job to lead people down that journey um but as long as you can attract clientele and as long as i can find people to work with that are as serious about it as i am it's a breeze and i love this and i hope it's something i can do for the rest of my life honestly i love working with people i love healing people and i love giving people a sacred safe space where it's just me and them or we can talk and vent and cry and curse and be open and release some stuff and get some shit off of our energy and get some stuff off our back I feel like that's so critical and I feel like that's so important and I feel like it's also important to just not feel guilty if you try to help somebody and they don't get help you know I've done mentorships with people I've had two mentorships that I've done that are really just you know not really giving me what I needed you know what I'm saying like the best people I feel like to work with are the people who ask questions the people who know what they're working to heal or just the people who are hungry the people who are willing to answer you know the things that I have to ask the people that are willing to do the work that I give them the people that are actively wanting to get better whether it's for them their children their husband their family healing generational curses I don't care why you want to get better I don't care why you want to heal. I don't care what your motivation is because we're all motivated by different things. But I love finding people who are motivated and people who are ready to do the work and people who are ready to be open and honest. You know, I have dealt with people who have lied to me. I have dealt with people who have said that they're ready to do this, this, that, and the third. And when they see the work and the discipline, they back off. I have people who um, kind of go into the same cycle over and over and over again. And at a certain point, they have to ask themselves, you know, Am I really ready to get out of this? You know what I'm saying? So you want to understand as a diviner, um, as a psychic, spiritual advisor, a tarot reader, whatever the case may be, you are asking people to do the hardest thing that they've ever had to do. You know, choosing to follow God, choosing to create your own relationship with God, choosing to heal so much stuff from your past and relinquish so much stuff and really release is the hardest thing that you will ever do in your life. 
it's definitely the best thing though because like I said the how I feel about myself and how I feel about my life has definitely changed and I am so grateful for who I am I'm so grateful for my life and I'm so grateful for my gifts and I feel like I really have purpose and I have a will to live and to be a good person now you know I didn't always feel like I really had a will to live you know what I'm saying I've definitely mentioned before you know having suicidal thoughts and stuff like that and just not really wanting to be here and feeling so disconnected from this human experience that I just wanted to get to the next lifetime. I didn't even really want to deal with this shit no more. But doing this work has definitely showed me that I'm in control and it's made me feel very powerful. It's made me feel like I am no longer a victim to the things that have victimized me and traumatized me in my life. It's made me feel like I am in control. It makes me feel like I am the person that gets to say if I'm good or not, if I'm happy or not, if I'm blessed or not, if I am healed or not. You know, I get to say that and I get to make that decision. You cannot trigger me. You cannot cause me to regress six months into my journey. You cannot cause me to fall down on my ass. I know what I want to do. I believe in myself. I trust myself. It's my time. I'm about to get it. I'm about to make it happen. So I feel like this journey has definitely given me a lot of confidence. Like, I am so fucking confident. I really feel like I can do anything. I feel like I can do anything. When I say that, I low-key might even feel like I'm a superhero on some shit. I am so confident in my abilities where I don't even care if everybody tells me it's wrong. If I feel like I can cure cancer with meditation, and I don't think I can, but I'm just saying something that sounds crazy. If I really feel like I can do that, I don't give a fuck what doctor, I don't give a fuck what professor, I don't give a fuck. If I feel like something is right and true, then it's right and true to me. And just me believing in myself and not really giving a fuck about what other people have to say and think and feel about how I live my life and what I choose to do. The only per people that I'm really looking to please is myself and God. That's it. I want to make sure that I'm happy and that I'm healed and I want to make sure that God is pleased with the things I do. Of course, I want to make sure that my husband is happy and I want to make sure the people around me are happy. But when it comes down to it, my main concern is me and my main concern is making sure that God knows that I am still doing the work and that God knows that I have not given up on myself and that I will not give up. And a lot of times people have already given up, you know, and it sucks when you work with someone and you're like, damn, if only I would have caught you three months ago or if only I would have caught you a year ago because time definitely um, can make people feel even more stuck. But time doesn't even really matter. I feel like that's something as well. A lot of clients are like, I've been in this relationship 10 years. I've been doing this 10 years. I've been doing this my whole life. And I work with people who are in their 40s, 50s, you know, teens. I work with everybody, you know what I'm saying? So in all different areas of life, we're constantly growing, we're constantly changing. And the best advice is to just get comfortable with that now so you can carry that throughout the rest of your life and be comfortable in that evolution. But yeah, I feel like the last two years have been very, very insightful. And I feel like it's given me so much clarity about humans and how we think and how we operate and the things that we experience and i feel like it's definitely given me an appreciation and a patience also with people um because i don't really push anything on anybody i have a lot of people in my life that are very very close to me that are fucked up you know they got a lot of trauma they got a lot of stuff that their parents did to them a lot of stuff in relationships all kind of shit where I'm thankful that I don't have to, you know, try to be a good person with the stuff that they got in their mind. I know a lot of people in my life who need to do a lot of work and they just don't want to do it. But I don't feel guilty. I don't feel like I'm pressed. I don't feel like I'm responsible for everybody. I let everybody go on their own journey. And I always let anybody around me know, if you ever need anything, I am here for you. I feel you. If you stressed, let me know. Let's talk about it. And if I feel like what they're dealing with is affecting our relationship, I always let them know. And we're able to, you know, kind of get some stuff out and have some conversations in that way. But I love the work that I do. I really, really love the work that I do. I'm very, very passionate about the work that I do. And this is one of the things that has given me, you know, the understanding that I feel like a lot of people don't have when it comes to mankind and humans and how people think and feel and operate. I feel like my dad was someone who, my dad's my hero, by the way, but my dad was definitely someone who always saw the good in people and always saw the bigger picture and realized that it wasn't ever about making somebody repay or making somebody get even with you or doing stuff for somebody when you know you're gonna get something in return 
It's really just about being the best person that you can be to the people in your life and giving them what they need in that current moment. And beyond that, you know, focusing on yourself. And I really feel like I was able to just see him, you know, know who to help and who not to help. And through all of that, he just really pressured, not pressured, but he really just let me know that he really, really loved God and that God was leading him to help guide, lead and uplift so many people even if it meant that he didn't get paid even if it meant that he didn't get a thank you even if it meant that he didn't get gratitude from it you know what i'm saying and i feel like you know just having that knowledge is life-changing and i really feel like this has definitely changed my life and given me a lot of insight and yeah i just really wanted to kind of share with you guys some of the things that i feel like i've learned in the last couple of years and the different types of clientele and the people that you can work with and the people that you can and just some collective things that I feel like the community has always been dealing with and probably always will be dealing with. But needless to say, I love that I was chosen to do this. I feel like I am the perfect person to be doing the work that I'm doing. And I am so, so grateful for my father and I'm so grateful to God. And I'm grateful for my mom too. You know, I'm grateful for anyone that has instilled in me that I am who I am and that I never should change my beliefs for anyone and that I should never compromise my beliefs for anyone. My mom has always told me that whoever you feel you are, whoever you feel you need, whatever you feel you deserve, you don't compromise that for anybody or anyone in any space. You know, you have to be 100% sure of who you are and what you need all the time. So I feel like I really had some incredible, strong, powerful, superhuman people, you know, raising me and pouring into me. And I still feel like I have a lot of people praying for me and sending me beautiful divine energy and things like that. And I feel like all of those energies overall have brought me to this point. And I continue to, you know, and I'll continue to do the same for everyone that I can and everyone that I come across. And I really, really, really am looking forward to um, two more years and five more years and 10 more years and 20 more years of doing this. And I hope that, you know, in five years we can have another conversation like this. Um, but I love you guys so much and I thank you guys for being here and I appreciate you guys as always. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some clarity or just, you know, gave you some things to think about as always. But I love you guys and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys. Bless.